Hey, what's up? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, this is Fragrance of Yah here. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm going to be posting some videos of the performance last night, Fragrance of Yah and my band. I had uh, two musicians playing with me last night and we performed at Milky's on Elmwood in Buffalo, New York. And we performed with Featherburn Kit and we performed with Brian, I want to say Dubay. Um, or Dun Dunby. I, I have to get his name exactly right. But it was great. The atmosphere was great. The audience was great. Um, the performers and performances were great. The energy was fantastic. The vibrations were right where they needed to be. We're all talking about wonderful things and raising vibrations and waking up your inner self and connecting with people and just engaging in the collective consciousness of God. It was wonderful. And I really enjoyed it and I'd love to play with them again. Uh, so anyone in Baltimore, I'm looking to come that way. I know that's where Featherburn Kit is uh, located. And so I'm looking to come down there and do some shows. That would be fantastic. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing me and my band. I'm also looking forward to coming down to New York City and um, a couple other places that we're looking at. Um, but the tour for 2020 is being put together as we speak. So if you're interested in us coming to where you are, please, please, please comment below. Um, also, just share videos, um, engage, like, you know, like, share, and um, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. That would be fantastic. Um, besides that, um, I just wanted to say um, my thought for right now, I'm standing in my classroom and over the break, because we were off for a week from the Buffalo Public Schools here, and um, during that week break, I worked with uh, the team at the Arts and Culture Stage for Buffalo's Juneteenth Festival. Um, I am the co-chair of the Arts and Culture Stage Committee, and we put together a Black History program for the week and ran that. I know, my week off from classes and from students, and there I am with um, about 30 kids <laughs> doing the same thing I do every day. Um, it was great. I'm glad the parents engaged. They love it. The kids loved it. They all learned something. Um, it was a wonderful experience. I love the team that I worked with. Um, I love that we were able to overcome any differences and just make sure that we got the job done and took care of what the kids' needs were and the program's needs. Um, I also just wanted to address one thing, and it's not about that group, it's just in general. As parents and as teachers, as leaders, as mentors, as community activists, as singers, as performers, as people of influence, everyone wants to be the fun parent, right? Everyone wants to be that person that the children are so excited to engage with and so excited and remember, you know, and want to see you again. And they're so excited. They run towards you. They want your autograph, etc. Everybody wants to be the star. Well, we can't all be the stars, you know? Uh, some people, if we're talking about a play, some people are on the stage, some people are off. Some people are building the stage. Some people are behind stage. Some people are in a sound booth. Some people are walking people to their seats. Some people are handing out programs. Everyone has a role and everyone's role is important. And without all these people, there are no stars. Without that responsible parent to do the job of raising the children and making them productive citizens, there is no fun parent, right? Somebody has to do the work. Somebody has to, to get down and dirty. I just told my kids in a family meeting yesterday, somebody's got to be dusty and, and tired and scraped up you know, in order for the job to get done. Everybody doesn't get to do that part. Everybody doesn't even see that part or know that that part exists because they're above it for whatever reason. Shouldn't be, we're all supposed to be equal, but everybody doesn't need to do everything. If we're carrying five bags and we have five people, each of us should carry a bag. 
It shouldn't be that one person is carrying two bags over here and another person is sharing a bag with, the, you know, it's just not necessary when we all can carry a bag if we're capable. And I'm not going to carry the heaviest bag if there's someone else there who's stronger than me. I'm going to carry the bag that's the right weight for me. So that was the thought that's been on my mind. Um, as much as I love doing all the wonderful things that I do with families, with children, with the community, um, with music and everything, it's just things worked so well with the performance last night because everybody chipped in. Everybody did their part. Nobody was overlapping, trying to do more than they should. Nobody acted like they knew more than, than they needed to. We all kind of just fell into a role where we could work together. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And so Featherburn Kit and Brian, and I'm going to figure out your last name. Um, and I apologize for that again. It was fantastic performing with you guys. Audience, it was wonderful feeling your energy. And uh, Colin and Aaron, who played with me, you guys were great. And also, I can't forget my husband, Juan Stanfield. You were fantastic. Thank you so much for even just being the person who drives me and drives me around, that is, <laughs> physically, like in the car. But I drove there. But you know, he drove and, and got some extra things for me from the house and just helped us set up and just fell into a role that worked. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes for success. Fall into the role that is meant for you, right? Everyone has a place. There's room for everyone, right? But everyone can't sit at the head of the table. Everyone can't sit in these specific seats. If there's a seat right next to the head, there's only, what, the two seats, one on each side. Okay? Everybody can't sit there. So we just got to find the right seat at the table where you're supposed to be, where you fit, where you work, where you're comfortable but not complacent, right? Mediocrity is unacceptable, but where you can function and flourish and thrive. Don't try to be in somebody else's spot. There's room for everyone, but we all need to know where our role is and acknowledge other people's strengths. Everyone has strengths. And don't try to take over where you know those are not your strengths. And that doesn't mean that you can't do it. We're not telling you that you can't. We're just saying it's not your strength. So let the person whose strength it is do that job and function in that role. Let the person whose strength it is. And if you don't acknowledge and you don't respect other people's strengths, I don't know why you would expect someone to respect yours. It's, it's a difficult situation. Um, I fall into a situation a lot of times where people just, I don't know, I, I'm a nice person. So you know that nice, you know, they think gullible, they think pushover. I'm not a pushover. I'm not gullible. And when I assert myself, I'm taken as something is wrong or something is, is not quite right about the situation because I am standing my ground, I'm enforcing my boundaries, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nice people have boundaries too. Uh, kind people have strengths as well. Kind and nice people need respect too. We need respect as a person. And as a person with strengths, just like everyone else. So if my strength as a teacher for 34 years of my 43-year life, because I've been teaching since I was nine, effectively, I had teachers who asked where those students went to school or what after-school program or what summer camp did they go to. They came to my house and were taught since I was nine years old, I've been teaching for 34 years. So as a teacher for 34 years, a person who runs three businesses, really more than that, but let's just go with the three for now, right? And one of them happens to be a homeschool with successful students, right? And we've had a lot of students come into our homeschool and go out and that's just with parents moving around and things like that. Um, and just helping and um, consulting for other families of homeschoolers, teaching at homeschool collectives as a musician 
That's one of my strengths. I play multiple instruments. I have produced four albums. Two of them are considered to be EPs. They're under 30 minutes. One is five songs, one is seven. But the other two complete albums. I've produced songs of my own. I have played on, I can't even count how many gigs. You know, I've performed internationally and I've performed with internationally known artists. So music is my strength. Singing, songwriting, playing instruments, producing albums, and producing things. I have a, a boutique of African clothing. I produced that clothing, so I'm a producer. That is one of my strengths, right? Um, affirming things, that is one of my strengths. And teaching and managing a class of children one of my strengths. Organizing programs since I've been with the, even the community university I've been with for seven years, since the beginning, since the pilot, I've been there. Um, doing administration, that's one of my strengths. Now that doesn't mean throw it all on me either. If you can do some, so be it. But let me flourish in my strengths and I, of course, I respect and allow you to flourish in yours, which I do anyways. Whether you respect mine and whether you allow me to do this or not, if you constantly try to step on my feet and things like that, what you're doing is stunting the growth of something that can be very great for all of us. You're also discouraging someone from wanting to be a part of it in the future. So let's all work to our best ability to let everybody shine in their strengths. All right, that's my message for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Fragrance of Yah. Come again.